Therefore, it is time for member statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I'd like to inform the House today that October is Influenza Immunization Awareness Month. Influenza, referred to as the flu, is a viral infection of the nose, throat, and lungs. It can be very easily spread from person to person through the touching of common objects, coughing, sneezing, or talking to another person. Although the flu can affect everyone, those suffering from an acute disease, people over 65, young children under 5, pregnant women, and Indigenous peoples are most at risk. Ontarians may be suffering from the flu if they experience a high fever of 39 degrees Celsius or higher, a severe cough, severe muscle aches, severe headache, chills, severe fatigue, sore throat, a runny or stuffy nose. It may take between one to four days for flu symptoms to appear after exposure to the virus and seven to day, 10 days for most Ontarians to recover. There are several tips to keep in mind this winter to prevent your chances of coming in contact with the flu. These tips include frequent hand washing, sneezing into your arm instead of your hand, avoid touching your nose, mouth, eyes, ears, and regularly disinfecting common objects such as computers, telephones, or door handles. But Mr. Speaker, the best prevention is to get your flu shot. The vaccine may protect you from getting the virus or minimize the symptoms of the virus. It may also protect, helps protect others by decreasing the spread of the virus. This winter, I encourage all Ontarians to visit their health care professional to receive their flu shot, in particular pharmacists, who are the most accessible health care provider with their increased scope of practice. Last year, 2,500 pharmacies participated and administered over 860,000 flu shots. Mr. Speaker, winter is coming. Can't stress the importance of getting your flu shot. I encourage all Ontarians to get their flu shot. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from London, Fanshawe. Speaker, today I rise to speak about the closure of the printing press of the London Free Press and the 135 jobs that have been lost in my, hotel, my hometown of London, Ontario. On June 1st, it was announced that Post Media Network will outsource the printing of the Free Press to Metro Media's group printing facility in Hamilton. For over 150 years, the London Free Press has been a beacon in our community. It is our local paper, the heartbeat of our city. Our rich experiences as Londoners have been written in those pages, and the ink that flows onto the newsprint through those printing presses has been like our lifeblood. Our city takes great pride in the London Free Press, and part of our sense of ownership comes from being printed in London. This closure represents another hit to the City of London and our families. While many tout the crisis of media consolidation is inevitable, we feel the loss to our community. Each of those 135 jobs represents a friend, a neighbour, and a fellow Londoner, and we feel their loss deeply. I ask them to take heart knowing their hard work and dedication will never be forgotten. Their service is forever enshrined in our city's shared and lived experience. Today, we are losing more than good jobs and economic security. We are also losing a part of our city's heritage. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. I rise today to remember and salute Peggy Delaney, a remarkable Beaches, East York resident. And recently, with Mary Margaret Mann, a local councillor, I was able to pay, take part in the naming of a laneway ceremony in Peggy's honour and to learn more about her from those who knew and loved her know, and knew her best. So Peggy was originally from Ireland and moved to Toronto in 1954, and she was involved in theatre, fashion, and the arts and possessed a wonderful voice that was the highlight of many events and occasions. She was also a tireless campaigner, fundraiser, and a participant for numerous causes, including assisting with the Special Olympics and sponsoring children through World Vision. Her class, her compassion, and her character and her generosity made her very special. She was always ready to help those with less, who were less fortunate and would often travel great distances to be with people who were sick. And she also possessed a tremendous confidence and a great sense of humour, with great lines such as, I can do any, any job as well as any two men. Oh, wow. <laughs> she was fiercely proud of her Irish heritage and equally proud of her Canadian home, raising four children here and acting as a mentor to countless others. Although she was recognized for many contributions, three stood out as her favorites. In 1997, she was Christian Grand Marshal, St. Toronto's St. Patrick's Day Parade, leading the procession on horseback at the age of 72. In 1988, she was honoured as her peers as Irish Person of the Year, and with the Ireland's Ambassador to Canada, she raised the Irish flag at Toronto City Hall. By all accounts, she was an ordinary citizen who left an extraordinary legacy, and she is now made more permanent by the naming of a laneway, Peggy Delaney Way, in Beaches East York, because, Speaker, she had her own special way. Thank you. Thank you.
Order Member Phoenix, the member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you. October is Autism Awareness Month. Earlier this year, when the government announced children over the age of five would no longer be able to receive intensive behavioral intervention, we heard stories from families who expressed the positive impact IBI therapy had on their children's ability to succeed in school and in our communities. Even after the government's own expert panel warned that removing children over five would have a detrimental impact on their lives, the government continued sticking to their talking points. This left hundreds of families in a state of fear and uncertainty as, they, as to whether their child would lose out on accessing this life-changing therapy. After months of opposition from parents, experts, municipalities, both opposition parties and organizations from across Ontario, the government finally reversed their decision. But there is still much work to do. This week, we heard about the Yes We Can Nursery School, who does tremendous work with children with autism, and they're losing their funding from this government. This is unacceptable. We must ensure supports are there children. for when they are in school and for when they transition into adulthood, because autism doesn't end at five. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud, proud to rise today as the MPP for Windsor West to highlight an important event that took place in Toronto this past weekend that I had the honour of attending. On Sunday, October 2nd, hundreds of firefighters, families and friends gathered to celebrate the lives of and remember the sacrifices of fallen firefighters. Seventy-nine names of fallen firefighters were added to the wall of the firefighter memorial. Of those 79 names, three were Windsor firefighters. Along with firefighters from across Ontario, members of Windsor's fire service were in attendance to pay their respects to their three fallen brothers. Speaker, it was a solemn occasion, and those of us in attendance could not help but leave the ceremony feeling touched by the incredible camaraderie and sense of family exhibited by the firefighters in attendance. Regardless of what part of the province they travelled from, no matter what community they serve, our firefighters have a connection to one another that we civilians may never experience. The personal sacrifices our firefighters make on a daily basis and those of their family and friends should never be overlooked or dismissed. The selfless service they dedicate themselves to not only makes an immeasurable impact on our lives, but leaves a lifelong imprint on their lives as well. Speaker, today I would like to thank firefighters across Ontario for the work that they do, thank Windsor firefighters for their service to my community, and thank Sunny Gerasim, Daryl Elwood, and Arthur Laslett and their families for the sacrifice they have made to help so many others. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Mississauga, Streetsville. Thank you very much. Speaker, Korea is an ancient land with a gentle and unique culture in Northeast Asia nestled among Japan, Russia, and Mongolia. Korean civilization dates back nearly two millennia before the Christian era. Korea today is a vibrant, dynamic, fiercely democratic and modern nation. After China and Japan, South Korea is Canada's third largest trading partner in Asia. Our Ontario cities are home to a thriving, well-educated Korean community, proud of its origins and culture and working to build a strong Canada, province of Ontario and the communities in which they live as our neighbours. This week's Korea National Flag Raising Ceremony was an opportunity to celebrate Korea's contribution to Canada and to work harder on a, a mutually beneficial trading relationship between the co two countries. We heard encouraging words from Korea's Consul General, Mr. Jeong Sik Kang, and the President of the Korea Cultural and Community Association, Mr. Ki Seok Lee. Just as Canada is for Korean firms, a superb gateway to the North American market, so too Korea is one of the nations that, in Asia, makes a good step-off point for firms that deal with China. We in Ontario look forward to solid trade and cultural progress and further exchange following the Premier's delegation to South Korea later this year. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Kamzahamnida. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Leeds, Grimble. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, with a heavy heart, I rise to celebrate the life of uh, Don Green. If the measure of one's life is the impact you've made on others, then Don Green was a giant. Our world is a better place today because Don was a part of it. Born in Toronto in 1929, Don married the love of his life, Shirley, after graduating from RMC. He went to work with his father-in-law and helped build United Maple Products into one of Canada's largest maple syrup producers.
What he accomplished in business was remarkable, Speaker. Indeed, many entrepreneurs in my riding will tell you they owe their success to Don's mentorship. But success in business did not define Don. Together with Shirley, he built a legacy of philanthropy that stretched around the world and will change lives at home and abroad for generations. From the Brockville YMCA to the Brockville General Hospital, countless organizations and people of all ages were benefactors of their generosity. When a fundraising drive suddenly made goal thanks to an anonymous donor, we all knew Don and Shirley were likely responsible. Around the globe, the Greens were champions of Canadian aid for Chernobyl and gave $2 million to build a village for orphans in Namibia. Don set an example we can all follow to use our good fortune to provide hope and opportunity to those less fortunate. Speaker, I join all residents of uh, Leeds Grenville in extending my heartfelt condolences to Shirley, Don's beloved wife of 60 years, and their children, Donald Jr., Alan, and Debbie. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Timiskimi Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Along with harvest season in uh, Ontario comes fall fair season. And I'm sure many of us have fall fairs in our ridings, and I'd like to name a few of mine. I've got Warren, Cochrane, Charlton, Inglehart, Matheson, Porcus. And the one I'd like to focus on today is the New Liskert Fall Fair. It was held September 15th and 16th and 17th. And some of the unique aspects of this fair, all fairs are wonderful, but some of the unique aspects, the children's parade on Friday where all the schools bust the children through a central, central point and you see a thousand kids walking down Whitewood Avenue to go to the parade. That's truly heartwarming. <laughs> On Saturday, they have the regular parade, and, and I've never actually counted the people. I'm too busy handing out candies. We just hand out candies to the kids, and we hand out 1,000 every year. Wow. So that is a big parade. One of the highlights of the New Liskert Fall Fair is if you buy an entrance ticket, you get tickets for the car draw. And every night, there's 10 names drawn out of the, out of the drum, and if, and if you're in attendance, your name is picked on the last night. It's 30 people, and the last person picked wins a car. Wow. The, the local dealers, every year, they take turns donating the car, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a packed, packed uh, event. There's everything you could think of at a fair. There's the midway, there's the horse draws, there's the cattle shows. All the volunteers that work at that fair and all the other ones, I'd like to thank them for all the work they do to keep our rural heritage alive. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. For the statement, the from Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I had the pleasure to attend the first annual Rare Disease Expo in Ajax on Saturday, September 24th, organized by Carrie Ann Penn, president and founder of the Carrie Ann Penn Foundation. She is here with two of her associates, Mar Marie Marcia and Maria Ciata. Uh, and they are in the East Gallery. If you would like to stand, ladies, we can acknowledge you. And I would like to uh, carry on with Sarian Fenn, is the architect behind the rare disease support meetings in the partnership with our Ajax Library and, of course, the Rare, rare Disease Expo. Carry on is an award winning advocate receiving Spinal Cord Injury Ontario Award, the University Health Network's Patty Dawson Award, the Town of Ajax Civic Award, and the Accessibility Award, to name a few. Her foundation, the Carry on Fenn Foundation, educates, supports, and helps to find solutions for those affected by rare diseases. There are over 7,000 known rare diseases, more than 50% of those impact our children. Carry on Fenn. Foundation is a registered not-for-profit organization, and I'm proud that our Minister of Health has been working with partners from across the country, leading a working group to develop a pan-Canadian rare disease strategy. And earlier this year, the Minister announced steps to create a clinic focused on diagnosing and treating adults with children with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. The key to helping those with rare diseases is to improve early detection and prevention provide timely and accurate diagnosis and care for and improve community supports for patients and their families. And I am proud that Carry On is helping to provide these community supports with Ajax patients and families for all these rare diseases. My hope that we will continue to work together to improve the lives of those suffering with rare diseases. I thank you on behalf of myself and my colleague, Grenville Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's now time I thank all members for their statements. It's now time for reports by committees. I beg